Okay, looking at a, another example, one that we've already seen, but we're going to do again with, uh, with calculus this time. So remember this was number seven. They asked us to compute the area uh, described by this definite integral after drawing a picture of the region. And, and we did that and we used geometry and we found that the area was 35 over 2 square units. Okay. But actually, of course, we can use calculus for this too, and, and that's almost preferable uh, for, for the most part because we can't always use geometry. Okay. Well, uh, you know, there are some other rules that, that we have to talk about uh, require, you know, these properties of definite integrals on page 384 in, in the book. Um, and with those properties, you should be able to integrate. Uh, find a, sorry, find a definite integral of just about any function that, that we, we've talked about. And in fact, I'm going to use one of the integrals to compute, uh, sorry, one of the rules to compute this integral um, uh, using calculus. So for instance, if I want to compute this area, this definite integral, so we're talking the integral from 0 to 5 of x plus 1 dx, remember how we do these problems when we're using calculus. We have to find an antiderivative of this function inside and then substitute these limits in. Well, if you look on, on those properties of definite integrals on page 384, they, the, the first couple look exactly like some properties we had for indefinite integrals. Okay, and one of them, it's, uh, let's see, it looks like rule number two, is basically the sum and difference rule. Okay, because what happens here when you have a really complicated function, of course, most of us just can't glance at it, you know, at least right away, and, and see what the indefinite integral is. Um, so what we can do when we have a, a definite integral like this, to simplify it a little bit, we can split it into two definite integrals. Okay, we can integrate x dx from 0 to 5, okay, and then since we're adding here, we can add the integral of 1 dx from 0 to 5, okay. Now again, you, you know, the book doesn't even do this uh, you know, in actuality. I mean, they, they kind of do do it, but they may not write it this way. It's just a nice rule to have that you know, we can use to take a, a big complicated function and uh, separate it into two or three functions if we're adding or subtracting and integrate each one separately. So what, what I might do, again, uh, this is uh, an example where I could use the sum and difference rule. I can integrate x. Uh, from 0 to 5 and then add the integral of 1 from 0 to 5. Okay. Well, both of these integrals now are ones we have some single rules for. We're integrating x to the power 1. Okay. So for the first definite integral, I need an antiderivative of x to the power 1. Okay. And if I use the power rule here, I get 1 over the old power plus 1 times x to the old power plus 1. Okay. That's 2. And remember, when we do definite integrals, we don't need the plus c, because it doesn't matter. We just need one uh, antiderivative. So I got the antiderivative of x that I need, and I've got to substitute the limits in. Okay. And to that, I'm going to add the definite integral of 1 dx from 0 to 5. And of course, you might remember another rule for integra integrals. Um, the integral of a constant is a constant times x plus c. So uh, the integral of 1, if I just need one antiderivative of, of 1, how about just 1x? Okay, so um, that's my antiderivative of 1, just 1x, okay, and I need to substitute the limits in there. Okay, so to finish the definite integral, remember I just have two of these antiderivatives, okay, because I separated using that sum and difference rule, and each for each one of these I have to put the upper limit in, and then the lower limit, and subtract. Okay, so for this first one, now that I have the definite integral, I get 1 half times 5 squared minus 1 half times 0 squared. Okay, so that's the first one, right? I can put it in parentheses if I want. Okay, yeah, there we go. Yeah, it's kind of messy here. Let me clean that up. Okay, and to that I'm going to add the result from the second definite integral. Well, that's just x, so I put 5 in for x and subtract what I get when I put 0 in for x. Okay. And if you see here what we get, it's going to be, well, let's see, that's 25 times a half, 25 over 2, minus 0, okay, plus 5 minus 0. And just like it was last time, this is 25 over 2 plus 5, which is 10 over 2. And so we get 35 over 2 
square units. Okay, same exact thing we got before. Okay, and of course that's that's what we would expect. Okay, say so we can use geometry or or these new rules. And again, this is just one of those rules of, of definite integrals. Um, uh, basically, the sum rule, which works just like the sum rule for indefinite integrals. Uh, you know, the other rules that you see in, on that page, just kind of want to talk about a few of them briefly. The first one, number one, is the constant multiple rule. It says something very similar. You know, if you're integrating, let's say, 3 times x squared from you know, 0 to 1, well, if, if you like, you can factor the 3 outside and then just integrate x squared. Oops, forgot my dx here. Okay. Okay. So, again, not much changes here. You just keep that 3 out front and do the definite integral like you would have done had you just had x squared here to begin with. The only difference is now we have to multiply by 3. Okay. So the antiderivative of x squared is 1 third x cubed. Okay, so I can substitute those numbers in. Okay. So I'd have 1 third times 1 cubed minus 1 third times 0 cubed. Okay. So let's see, I think this is going to be 3 times, well actually I could multiply the 3 back in now, it's going to cancel these 3's, and I think the answer would just be 1. Okay. So, you know, a couple little rules here, just uh, various rules uh, with, for definite integrals we can use. You know, the last 3, that was, let's see, that was uh, I think the second one. The last 3 just kind of do some little tricks with limits. You know, one of them says if you integrate a function from a number to that same number, okay, the integral is always zero. Okay, well, and this makes sense because if you think about area, I'm asking you to find the area below a curve from A to A. So, you know, just quickly here, if if that's A and I'm integrating from A to A, this region has no width. So, you know, there can't be any area here. It has no width at all. It's just kind of a, a little, you know, straight line region. And, uh, you know, and some other rules there. But, you know, just be kind of familiar with these and, and their properties of, of uh, of, of limits in those last three properties of, uh, of definite integrals, things we can do with the limits and how they affect the answer. Okay.